so uh, we we have you know till now we have discussed about the leakage current what is the leakage current uh, what is the reason for the flow of leakage current right uh, the leakage for the flow of leakage current is uh, two things one is the common mode voltage and the other is the uh, panel capacit parasitic capacitances right so both of them uh, put together allows a path for the leakage current flow and also has a forcing function for the leakage current to flow uh, through the ground and then comes back through phase and neutral in a common mode fashion right not in the differential fashion so we saw that the full bridge inverter right for example uh, the full bridge inverter we saw in previous discussion that if we are using bipolar modulation right bipolar modulation that means essentially point if you see voltage across vab right it will be oscillating between plus and minus vdc right there is no zero state used so if we use bipolar modulation then we observe that the high frequency common mode voltage right the switching frequency term is actually equal to zero right so common mode voltage still exists it has a dc value and it has a low frequency or uh, grid frequency value but there is no high frequency term that exists and and therefore there is you know no or rather very 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 minimal amount of leakage current if at all you would be able to observe so so you know you can al always use bipolar modulation and and develop inverters based on that if we let's say talk about single phase inverters but the problem with bipolar modulation is uh, or rather the advantage uh, of going with unipolar modulation is that because now in unipolar modulation you only switch between plus vdc and zero and for other half you switch between minus vdc and zero so you can you know uh, reduce the filters that are required for this uh, application right as compared to bipolar so you can have less filter right or you can you know improve on the efficiency right so you can you do get quite a few advantages of because of using unipolar modulation but the catch is as we discussed that in unipolar modulation there is a common mode high frequency voltage which forces common mode leakage current so so if you see early let me say early uh, in somewhere between 2000 to 2005 or maybe till 2010 right in that uh, in that period uh, uh, when you know solar was becoming more and more popular people you know could narrow down and could figure out that look this is the problem you can make a bipolar based inverter but then the leakage current is going to be not there but you know it will be probably not as efficient but if you go for unipolar you can improve efficiency but then there's leakage current problem so people started investigating about circuits where you can achieve both the advantages that means you achieve unipolar modulation that means your vab would be only oscillating between plus and zero and minus and zero right uh, in each half uh, cycle and plus there is no or if i should not say no but maybe let's say minimum leakage current right so people investigate started investigating these circuit topologies and these circuit topologies if you you know want to search yourself on ieee explorer or some other website then these are usually called as transformer less solar inverters right which is what this video is about so why are they called transformer lesses because you know as as you would see in the previous video by putting a isolation transformer you can use any inverter circuit topology and you can suppress the leakage current right that's possible because transformer acts as a very high impedance or rather an open circuit to the flow of common mode currents 
and and therefore if you can figure out a circuit which can be used without transformer and still gives you low leakage current right that is what constitutes this group of circuit topologies which are called as transformerless solar inverter topologies or transformerless inverter topologies right let's move on now uh, and and let's have a look at you know uh, one or maybe two of these circuit topologies uh, in little bit more detail So the first topology that we are going to talk about today is called as H5, right? What do you mean by H5? So usually you have full bridge, right? Or you have H bridge where you would use four devices. Here it's kind of a full bridge circuit, but it all uses five devices or five switches. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the general architecture is something like this. You have panel. Then you have one switch here, followed by the regular inverter, right? and then similarly, now you can have you know inductor, and then you connect to the grid and so on. Right? Where grid could be earth. Similarly, your parasitics will exist. Right. So mainly rest is just the system. If you see this part is the H5 circuit topology because it has five switches. Let me just number them S1, S2, S, sorry, let me just say this is one, two, three, four. Right. And let me call this point as A, this point as B. Now, how does this circuit operate? This is switch S5. When you want to, so this can, you know, operate in unipolar. So how it achieves, achieves unipolar is when you want a positive state, right? Positive state means you want VAB to be equal to VDC. In that case, you turn on S1, S2 and S5, right? So you can imagine now if S1, S2, S5 are turned on in this circuit, right? Uh, so S1 is on, so A point is connected to the top here, S5 is on, so it's connected to the plus D ceiling, and B point is connected through S2 to the negative D ceiling, right? There is, uh, let's say this is the inverter capacitance and this is the D ceiling, VDC. So you have to keep S1, S2, S5 on, and then obviously the other switches, which is S3 and S4 are off. You can achieve the positive state. Now, if you are in the positive cycle and you want to you know, uh, switch between positive state and zero state, so how does this achieve zero state? So the zero state, wherein VAB would be equal to zero, is achieved by turning on S1 and S3 and keeping S2, S4 and S5, all three of them off. So you see only S1 and S3 are on. So that means point A goes to the top, right? And point B also S3 is on goes to the top. That means VAB is equal to zero. And we open S5, S2 and S4 switches. Now conventionally, uh, there was no S5. So conventionally in H, uh, full bridge, we would only open S2, S4, but here we also open S5. And, and that is the one which, you know, plays the trick of eliminating the or rather minimizing the flow of leakage current. Uh, I, I'll come to that in a short while. Before that, you can see now this is, let's say, for the positive cycle. And similarly, you can draw for the negative cycle. Uh, you will have negative state, right, which you can achieve by uh, uh, switching on S3, S4 and S5 and S1, S2 being off and the zero state which is again achieved by the same thing which is S1, S3, the top two switches being on and the rest of the switches S2, S4 and S5 being off, right? So the zero state if you see in both negative and positive cycle is achieved using the same combination of or the same arrangement of the switches. 
All right. So one thing is okay now. If you are talking about differential mode operation, this sounds okay. You can you know use these switches. You can create the switching st states. You can using that you can generate VAB right uh, with the magnitude and the phase angle with respect to the grid as you want. Which is okay. Now let's focus on the common mode analysis of this circuit and how exactly this minimizes the leakage current. So let me just you know copy this circuit. Now, this is the original circuit. I can always draw the common mode equivalent right, of this circuit. So how would the common mode equivalent look like? By now, I think we should be comfortable in doing that. There is a DC volt source, VDC, right? And then there is a capacitance CP2. There is another capacitance CP1. And this point we were calling it as C then gives rise to two voltages. One of them is VAC, right? And the other one is VBC, right? And then it goes to two inductors and the grid through some resistance to the earth at substation right this is the equivalent circuit now if you see observe i have you know left a little bit of gap uh, between uh, uh, the sources and the uh, dc side which i would fill in uh, based on the discussion now see what happens uh, when the active state is there right during the positive state right s1 and s2 are on right and all the sorry s1 s2 and s5 are on and the other s3 s4 are open so this is you know equivalent circuit if you draw this is precisely same as a uh, full bridge inverter so we have done analysis in uh, one of the you know previous videos and you can very quickly write down the voltage across vcp1 which is actually going to be equal to vg by 2 minus vdc by 2 right this is the voltage that will appear across the parasitic capacitance uh, during the positive state. So far, so good. Now, what happens when you switch from positive state to zero state? Right? These three switches are off. Only S1 and S3 are on. And therefore, in zero state, what happens is there is no path for the common mode current to flow. If you see from the top, right, common mode current cannot flow from DC side to AC side or AC side to DC side because all the three switches are off. And therefore, no common mode current can flow in this state, right? And if no common mode current can flow, then VCP1 would almost remain the same as it was in the previous state. And same thing goes for VCP2. And therefore, I have, you know, drawn these things as open. So if you see, these are in a way representing this state of the switch S5. So for example, when uh, uh, when these, uh, uh, both of them, you can, you know, sort of say they are representing S5. So when S5 is on, in that case, we understand VAC, right, which is the uh, active state VAC is equal to VDC, VBC is equal to zero. And therefore, in the equivalent circuit, you can draw Right. If I if I only you know analyze the effect of uh, uh, I forget the uh, uh, common mode because of the DC, then I can further simplify the top circuit, calling this as the total parasitic capacitance. This is that switch. This is a common mode voltage because of the switching, which is VDC plus zero by two, right? And the inductor and let's say I'm neglecting the grid effect as of now. So this is the case, right? This is L by two. So, so when switch is on, S5 is on, then the common mode voltage is VDC by 2. And because of that, the capacitor voltage will get charged to this value, right? The exact thing, including all the DC and everything put together. And when zero state come, this switch will get open, right? There is no path for the current to flow through. And then this capacitor, parasitic capacitor voltage would remain as it is. Nothing will flow. 
then next time again when switch is on then again your parasitic capacitor will be equal to this now if you assume or if you see you are switching at much faster frequency right so between the two switching instants your dc voltage is almost constant right your grid voltage also is you know more or less constant because grid is uh, voltage is changing at 50 hertz right very very slow so between two switching instants grid voltage has not changed so the next time when you again turn on s5 your vcp1 is the same which was before so again no current flows even when you turn on s5 right so by utilizing this switch s5 you have you know fictitiously created an isolated system uh, or rather you have fictitiously isolated dc side and the ac side and therefore no leakage current flows when s5 is open and when s5 is on then anyways the common mode voltage is the same what it was before so the capacitance does not see any change in voltage and then no current flows right so this is the basic principle uh, 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 how this circuit avoids the flow of leakage current let me give you a little bit more details about this before you know i uh, uh, open the floor and you can ask questions i'm sure you may be you know thinking about quite a few questions uh, let me you know uh, maybe try to give answers to some of those even before you really go ahead and ask those so first question uh, first question is that i told you vg is uh, not varying uh, fast right vg is only varying at 50 hertz but yes it is still varying so what will happen is if you I'm just, you know, exaggerating the picture here. If this is VG, right, and I let's say this is one in sampling. This this period represents the sampling period, right? This represents period the sampling period. That means the rate at which S5 is again turning on, right, after this interval. So if you see the first period, uh, VG will be here. But the next time when you again come back to the positive state, VG might be here. So if you see this uh, common mode circuit, now in this common mode circuit, this capacitor would be forced to change the voltage, right, as per the new VG. And, and this change will force some amount of leakage current. Although the leakage current is going to be very, very small, reason being that this change, change in VG, because if you keep smaller and smaller TS, the change in VG over the period of TS is going to be, again, smaller and smaller, right? And, and thus, since uh, TS is, you know, much, much smaller than the fundamental period, then usually this delta VG or the step in VG is also very small. And therefore, you know, practically there would still be some amount of leakage current that will flow. And that would, you know, be a function of TS and T0 uh, in, in this scenario. So this is one point, right? So although ideally we can say we will make, uh, I mean, the circuit can eliminate the leakage current, but does not eliminate it, you know, rather suppresses it to a very low value because there are still factors which could, you know, flow lead to flow of this current. This is one thing. Now, second thing is about switch realization, right? So if some of you are not familiar with switch realization, I would suggest you can, you know, go to my other, uh, uh, playlist which is on the uh, power electronics basics uh, there you can you know watch a video on switch realization so so what is switch realization switch realization essentially means that we have these you know five six switches and now we want to uh, these are i've shown them as ideal four quadrant switches but we want to realize them using the actual mosfets and, and igbt so how do we do that right so let me just give you a little bit of idea of that so if you see this circuit this circuit usually uh, one would represent like this so switch s3 would usually be can you know can be a mosfet or can be an igbt right so so let's say this is how the switch s3 looks like right similarly this is how the switch s2 looks like now this switch realization is same as that of a normal full bridge inverter so you can follow those notes or those videos and do that but the tricky part here is how do we realize switch s5 sorry this is so how do we realize switch s5 right now s5 
one of the option is that we can you know use a single mosfet or a single igbt connected in this way or should we use you know connected in the other way or should we use a four quadrant switch that is back to back connection of mosfets right so should should we go for a should we go for b should we go for c right obviously c is a kind of a superset of a and b so c would still work but you may not prefer to go for c because c will then have you know more losses because there are more devices in conduction more device count so more cost and so on so i mean usually as we do in any power circuit we first try to see if we can you know realize using uh, just a or b we can you know certainly think of realizing just using a diode but but that is not possible here so so the next possibility is using one of the uh, options a or b so i'll tell you the exact thing which is actually being used is this right and and let me tell you how it works and and why this is you know good enough and you don't need a four quadrant switch even though when the ideal switch when we are drawing we are saying that it will completely isolate right but if you are drawing like this then there is a possibility that this diode may conduct during even if switch s5 is open mosfet s5 is open the diode may conduct and may allow the flow of leakage current right that possibility exists but that does not happen so let me tell you why that does not happen so when uh, switch 5 s5 is on then anyways there is no problem because s5 is on so current can flow in any direction through this mosfet either through its you know it will most likely flow through its channel in any direction so that's not a problem the problem is now we need to you know ensure that what happens when s5 is off so when s5 is off right in that case uh, uh one thing which you would observe so in that case usually these two things these two devices are on right uh, which is s1 s3 are on and s4 s2 are off so this vdc voltage appears across the diode of s5 and diodes of s2 and s4 right and this vdc voltage will try to you know reverse bias these diodes all the three diodes and will try to turn them off right so you think of it as something like this let's say this is one diode this is another diode this is third diode right and you apply vdc what will happen this all the three diodes will get reverse bias fine so yeah looking at it it looks like this might work but then there is one more catch the catch is in this right hand side circuit what if you know there is some additional circuit connected through this point right and and then what may happen is this vdc may be only be blocked by the bottom two diodes and the top diode you know may still conduct so who knows that that exi there exists a possibility right so if you see in this full in bridge inverter also if you see point a and point b they are connected to the external circuit right and therefore a possibility may exist wherein the full vdc is been blocked by the switches diode s2 and s4 and the diode of s5 might become forward biased in that case it might flow the it might allow the flow of leakage current but that does not happen and and we can you know very quickly prove that uh, uh, the way to go about it is uh, draw the full circuit so if you see this and grid voltage for the time being let's say let us split into two right and and s1 and s3 are on so if you write krichov's voltage law in the loop where s3 s1 a top inductor uh, grid and bottom inductor right if you write uh, krichov's voltage law in this loop as we have done in one of the previous videos also you can very easily prove that v alpha o is equal to zero right and if you can show that then you can also write that v alpha with respect to the earth v alpha g is equal to v grid by 2 right now from the life ten side also we understand that the parasitic capacitance voltage will not change right as we said when switch is open Uh, this voltage will almost uh, it's a capacitor right so it will have a capacitive action so it will try to retain the voltage so what is vcp1 vcp1 as we have written above 
uh, it is VG by 2 minus VDC by 2. So therefore, if you now define voltage alpha with respect to this negative bus C, right, what will that be? V alpha with respect to C will be nothing but V alpha with respect to the ground minus VC with respect to the ground, which is nothing but VCP1. So this is VG by 2 minus VG by 2 plus VDC by 2, which will give you VDC by 2. What it says is the point alpha with respect to the negative bus is at VDC by 2. What it implies in the right hand side figure is that this point is at VDC by 2 if with respect to this point. Right? And therefore, these diodes are only blocking VDC by 2 and thus the upper diode has to block the full voltage of VDC. And you know, this sort of says that this just using a switch which can only block a unidirectional voltage is good enough uh, for realization where there is no leakage current or minimal leakage current will flow in this circuit. Right. If you want to read uh, more about more about you know this circuit, uh, there is a patent which exists, uh, which is I think uh, of 2005. Uh, I'll give you the number. You can you know Google yourself, and if you want to have a look at that, let me just check EP 162649482. Right. And, and this patent is pulled by SMA. Let's move on to the next circuit, which I would, you know, not go into much of detail. And I'm sure now when I draw that circuit, you can very quickly yourself figure out the operation and why there is going to be no leakage current in that circuit also. So the second circuit is called as HERIC, uh, abbreviated as HERIC. Uh, which stands for highly efficient and reliable inverter concept, right? How does it look like? Again, the basic concept is the same that we want to achieve unipolar modulation. And at the same time, we want to suppress the leakage current. So the same you know, full bridge circuit, uh, uh, only instead of using H5 kind of fifth switch on the DC side, this circuit utilizes a four quadrant switch on the AC side, right? And rest of the circuit is same. Right, so I can say S1, sorry, let me again say this one as S1, S2, S3, S4, right? I call these as S5 and S6. So if you see S5, X6 there, if you do switch realization, you will realize you would need a, a four quadrant switch, which should allow current in both direction as well as voltage blocking in both direction. And, and, and for that reason, I have shown as two switches here, Right, and and they could be you know a series uh, opposite connection of MOSFETs and so on. Now, how does this circuit operate? Again, if you want to have let's say positive state, right, turn on S1, S2, and keep everything else S3, S4, S5, S6 as off. Right, let me just call it as a single switch S5. Yeah, so keep S5 off. So which is regular, right? If you see the equivalent circuit, S1 is on. So S1 will be on. The current can flow, differential current, something like this, right? And your VAB is plus VDC. If you want to have zero state, then now instead of using the switches S1 to S4 for realizing zero state, we use switch S5 to realize the zero state. So S5 is on, right? That means this is like a short circuit. So VAB is zero and all the switches S1, S2, S3 and S4, they are off. That means again, this is the path which isolates the DC side with the AC side. 
and again the leakage current cannot flow in the zero state and in the next positive state again the parasitic capacitance voltage or rather the total common mode voltage would be almost same and therefore very nominal amount of leakage current might flow uh, but as long as your sample, your your switching period is much smaller than the uh, 50 hertz or 60 hertz fundamental period uh, then that current is going to be much much smaller all right, so this is basic principle of uh, Herrick circuit. There exist, you know, quite a few uh, circuits in literature. Uh, 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 subsequently, quite a few circuits came, uh, uh, different circuit topologies, you know, trying to achieve the same basic thing, which is no leakage current and unipolar modulation. So uh, I have already shared one paper with you. You can have a look at that paper and, and you can feel free to look at a few more concepts if you want to. Now, if you compare, let's let's do a quick comparison, right? If you compare Herrick with H5, which one do you think is better and why, for example, right? So let me, we paste them top and bottom and so that we can, you know, clearly see the uh, comparison here. So in, uh, uh, one is clear that Herrick requires six switches, H5 requires five switches, right? So Herrick requires more switch count more switch count means more gate drivers, increased cost, right? Uh, this is one point. The second point is if you see between H5 and Herrick, in Herrick, during zero state, two switches are conducting, right? So S5 is actually formed by two switches. So current will flow through two switches. In H5 also, during zero state, S1 and S3 are on, and therefore the two switches are conducting. So the conduction losses happening during the active state or, or sorry, during the zero state might be equal. But what about conduction losses in the active state? So in the Herrick circuit, active state is where current flows through S1 and then comes back through S2. So only two switches are conducting. On the other hand, in H5, the current flows through S5, S1 and S2. So there are three switches that are conducting and an additional switch in series implies an additional resistance and implies additional conduction losses, right? So it may so happen that H5 conduction losses would maybe slightly more than that of Herrick circuit. That's, you know, ballpark comparison between H5 and Herrick you can do. So there is a trade-off which exists between, you know, uh, the device number of device count or cost versus the uh, uh, efficiency uh, between these two circuits. Okay, that I think sums up our discussion uh, on, on this part.